O God, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. Immortal, invisible God, only wise, in light, inaccessible, hid from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, the Ancient of Days. Almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Unresting, unhasting, and silent as light. Nor wanting, nor wasting, Thou rulest in might. Thy justice like mountains, I soaring above. Thy clouds which are fountains Of goodness and love. Great Father of glory, Pure Father of light, Thine angels adore thee, all veiling their sight. O loud we would render, O help us to see. Tis only the splendor of light hideth thee. The Lord has summoned heaven and earth to witness his judgment of his people. The God of gods, the Lord, has spoken and summed the earth. From the rising of its sun to its setting, out of sun's perfect beauty he shines. Our God comes, he keeps silence no longer. Before him fire vows. Around him tempest rages. He calls on the heavens and the earth to witness his judgment of his people. Summon before me my people who made covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens proclaim his justice. For God himself is the judge. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. The Lord has summoned heaven and earth to witness his judgment of his people. Call me on the day of trouble, and I will come to free you. Listen, my people, I will speak. Israel, I will testify against you. For I am God, your God. I accuse you, lay the charge before you. I find no fault with your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I do not ask more bullocks from your farms, nor goats from among your herds. For I own all the beasts of the forest, beasts and their thousands on my hills. I know all the birds in the sky, all that moves in the field belongs to me. Were I hungry, I would not tell you, for I own the world and all it holds. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? 
pay your sacrifice thanksgiving to God, and rend him your votive offerings. Call on me in the day of distress, I will free you and you shall honour me. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. To the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and for ever. Amen. Call on me in the day of trouble, and I will come to free you. A sacrifice of thanksgiving will honour me. But God says to the wicked, But how can you recite my commandments and take my covenant on your lips? You despise my law and throw my words to the winds. You see a thief and go with him who throw in your lot with adulterers, who unbridle your mouth for evil, and whose tongue is plotting crime. You sit and malign your brother, and slander your own mother's son. You do this, and should I keep silence? Do you think that I am like you? Mark this, you will never think of God, lest I seize you when you cannot escape. A sacrifice of thanksgiving honours me, and I will show God's salvation to the upright. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and for ever. Amen. A sacrifice of thanksgiving will honour me. I never cease to pray for you. We ask God to fill you with knowledge of his will. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. Why do you keep repeating this proverb in the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten unripe grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, it is the Lord who speaks. There will, be no longer, there will no longer be any reason to repeat this proverb in Israel. See now, all life belongs to me, the father's life and the son's life. Both alike belong to me. The man who has sinned, he is the one who shall die. The upright man is law-abiding and honest. He does not eat on the mountains or raise his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel does not seduce his neighbour's wife or sleep with a woman during her periods. He oppresses no one, returns pledges, never steals, gives his own bread to the hungry, his clothes to the naked. He never charges usury on loans, takes no interest, abstains from evil, gives honest judgment between man and man, keeps my laws and sincerely respects my observances. Such a man is truly upright. It is the Lord who speaks. But if anyone has a son prone to violence and bloodshed, who commits one of these misdeeds, even though the father never has, a son who dares to eat on the mountains and to seduce his neighbour's wife, who oppresses the poor and needy, steals, fails to return pledges, raises his eyes to idols, engages in filthy practices, charges usury on loans and takes interest, then this son shall certainly not live. Having committed all these appalling crimes, he will have to die. 
and his blood will be on his own head. The man who has sinned is the one who must die. A son is not to suffer for the sins of his father, nor a father for the sins of his son. To the upright man, his integrity will be credited. To the wicked, his wickedness. But if the wicked man renounces all the sins he has committed, respects my laws, and is law-abiding and honest, he will certainly live, he will not die. All the sins he has committed will be forgotten from then on. He shall live because of the integrity he has practised. What? Am I likely to take pleasure in the death of a wicked man? It is the Lord who speaks, and not prefer to see him renounce his wickedness and live. But if the upright man renounces his integrity, commits sin, copies the wicked man and practices every kind of filth, is he to live? All the integrity he has practised shall be forgotten from then on. But this is because he himself has broken faith and committed sin, and for this he shall die. But you object. What the Lord does is unjust. Listen, you house of Israel, is what I do unjust? Is it not what you do that is unjust? When the upright man renounces his integrity to commit sin and dies because of this, he dies because of the evil that he himself has committed. When the sinner renounces sin to become law-abiding and honest, he deserves to live. He has chosen to renounce all his previous sins. He shall certainly live. He shall not die. And yet the house of Israel objects. What the Lord does is unjust. Is what I do unjust, you house of Israel? Is it not what you do that is unjust? House of Israel in future, I mean to judge each of you by what he does. It is the Lord who speaks. Repent. Renounce all your sins. Avoid all occasions of sin. Shake off all the sins you have committed against me and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why are you so anxious to die, house of Israel? I take no pleasure in the death of anyone. It is the Lord who speaks. Repent and live. They shall no longer say, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. It is the man who has sinned who must die. In future I mean to judge each of you by what he does. A son is not to suffer for the sins of his father, nor a father for the sins of his sons. It is the man who has sinned who must die. A reading from the Sermon of St. Augustine on the Shepherds. The Lord chastises, Scripture says, every son whom he accepts. And do you say, perhaps you will be exempt? If exempt from suffering chastisement, then exempt from the number of his sons. But you will say, does he chastise every son? Without doubt he does chastise every son, as he chastised even his only son, the only son, born of the Father's substance, equal to the Father in the form of God, the Word by whom all things were made, could not possibly be chastised. For this purpose he clothed himself in flesh, so that he might not escape chastisement. Will he who chastises his sinless only son Leave alone his sinful, adopted son. The Apostle declares that we are all called to adoption. We have received the adoption of sons, so as to be co-heirs with, his only, with the only son, and be also his inheritance. Ask of me, and I will give you the Gentiles as your inheritance. But he has put before as an example in his sufferings. 
But obviously the weak man must neither be deceived by false hopes nor shattered by fear, lest he fail at the prospect of temptations to come. Say to him, prepare your soul for temptation. He begins perhaps to tremble, to falter, to refuse to approach. You have that other saying, God is faithful, who does not allow you to be tried beyond what you can bear. To hold out this promise while you preach sufferings to come is to strengthen the weak. When you promise God's mercy to an excessively fearful and terrified man, not that temptations will not come, but because God does not allow one to be tried beyond what one can bear. This is binding up the broken. There are some people who, hearing of future tribulation, arm themselves the more strongly and, as it were, thirst for their drink. What is a healing remedy for the faithful? They reckon of little importance for themselves and seek even the glory of martyrdom. There are others who hear of inevitable trials to come, which must naturally come to a Christian and which no one else experience, experiences but the one who wishes truly to be a Christian. And which, when such trials are upon them, they are broken and lamed. Offer the bandage of consolation. Bind up what is broken. Say, do not be afraid. He in whom you have believed will not desert you in your trials. God is faithful. He does not allow you to be tried beyond what you can bear. You are hearing this not just from me. It is the Apostle speaking. And he also says, Do you wish to have a proof of Christ, of Christ who speaks in me? So when you hear this, you hear it from Christ himself, from that shepherd who feeds Israel. For to him was said, You give us for our drink tears, in measure. What the Apostle says, He does not allow you to be tried beyond what you can bear. This the prophet expresses by, in measure. Do not cast aside the one who both corrects and encourages you, terrifies and consoles you, strikes you and heals you. It is for you we face death all day long, and I counted as sheep for the slaughter. These are the trials through which we triumph, by the power of him who loved us. You make us like sheep for the slaughter, and scatter us among the nations. These are the trials through which we triumph, by the power of him who loved us. Let us pray. Look upon us, Lord, creator and ruler of the whole world. Give us grace to serve you with all our heart that we may come to know the power of your forgiveness and love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God.